video about the H3 lions. Um, yet another way for white to play against the king's Indian. And once again a line where black gets good play in my opinion. Um, we're starting with the move h3 here, short castle, and now bishop g5. This is a line I haven't faced myself yet. I've only played against the line knight f3 when we play e5, d5, which is completely different, and we'll discuss in the next video. Um, h3, bishop g5 has been uh, played quite a bit recently by Levon Aronion, a name that we've seen before in the bishop e2, bishop e3 line. So he's trying all kinds of uh, tricky lines against... Uh, King's Indian players like Nakamura on the top level. And uh, against this particular line, I want to be very consistent and play exactly the same way as the Averbach variation. Averbach, as we've seen in the previous video, bishop e2 and bishop g5. So the difference here is quite small, except that oftentimes white likes to put his bishop on d3. So let's have a look. White plays, uh, black plays c5, once again aiming for this Benoni structure. And after d5, e6, bishop d3. Now, one difference we see is that g4 has been covered, and after e takes d5, e takes d5, which is the main line, there's also no option of playing bishop f5 with an idea of knight e4, because that would simply allow bishop takes f5, which is you know, not a nice pawn structure after g takes f5. Excuse me. So, next... Um, uh, next on, uh, we play knight d7 here, but before we go into this line, let me have a look at uh, c takes d5. In the previous video I was a bit vague about this Benoni structure, and I said that black can, choo can choose any plan. That was against specifically the bishop e2, bishop g5 uh, variation. Let me quickly say something about that. Um, I told you guys... Uh, here, sorry, here, black can make any move. Now, later I was thinking a bit about this, and probably it's a good start with h6 here. The idea of bishop e3, knight g4. Um, anyway, here again, white has the option of uh, e, d, c, d. And here I advise you to play rook e8. h3 H3 is quite useful, so h6 there, uh, h6 now doesn't make as much sense. Uh, first of all, bishop h4, but also bishop e3 might be a good move, so there's no knight g4 anymore. Um, after rook e8, I analyze knight e2. If knight f3, there is already a nice move c4 here. And this was a game by Grishuk, who was a good King's Indian player, beating uh, former world champion Vladimir Kramnik in 2011. After bishop c2, b5. Note, by the way, that if we take here, there's knight takes e4 check. Uh, knight takes e4, and after bishop takes d8, knight takes c3 check, taking the queen back and winning. Um, bishop c2, he played b5, and already black's position was really nice. After a3, he played knight d7, follow up with knight c5, putting, putting pressure on that e4 pawn, played bishop d7, I think a5, b4 afterwards. Completely crushed white. So, knight f3 is definitely not the right move, and knight e2 is better. White likes to castle short and often play with f4 later. Um, I advise you to play knight d7, castle a6, a4 to stop b5, sorry, b5. And now h6 is interesting. Bishop e3, now knight e5. We'll see later why exactly we played h6, because for the moment it looks a bit weird. White removes that bishop from c2. Once again, he tries to not change any pieces, so black might get a little bit pushed back by f4 later and regret that he hasn't been able to uh, exchange one of the knights, for example. But there is a nice piece sacrifice here that I looked at a little bit. Bishop d7, b3, stopping stuff going on c4. So now f4 is really threatening to win this knight on, uh, knight on e5. Um, however, we play b5 anyway in this position. And after a, b, a, b, changing some pieces here, f4, there's this interesting move, knight g4. And I think this is more or less the reason that c takes d5 is not very good. 
Um, after h g b4, we will take back with the bishop later on g4. Let's say knight b1, bishop to g4. Then pick, pick up the e pawn, and even though we only have two pawns at that moment for the piece, black is extremely active and um, has a very strong initiative. So a nice position for black. Um, note also that there's the idea knight takes d5 using this bishop on e3, unprotected bishop. So that's a little bit more of an example line about this uh, Benoni. Please excuse me that uh, I came back to the Averbach in this video, but just wanted to uh, give you a little bit better um, idea about that. We're going to look at e takes d5, and this is once again uh, the right move for white. He's trying to uh, keep this structure uh, less dynamic, so b5 is quite hard to, to play. And um, if white manages to play, let's say, knight e2 and short castle, he does have a pretty nice advantage and a very stable one because black will have uh, problems with the uh, lack of space. So it's important to be quick here as black. And the, the best move is to start with knight d7 with the idea of knight e5. There is um, <coughs> two serious moves here. The one is f4 and one is knight f3, which is the main line. Um, knight e2 is not very um, consistent because we, uh, white would let us play knight e5 and take the bishop. And then not only do we have the bishop pair, but we also succeeded in changing that one piece and uh, that means that we have more space for the, for the remaining pieces. So that's fine for black. f4, um, I found this nice move b5. I'm not sure it's a novelty, but it's definitely a very strong idea. And um, I'll show you uh, what, uh, what the point is exactly. If knight takes b5, which is uh, the most logical move, um, not allowing some stuff like c takes b5 and c4, I think, opening up all these diagonals which are weakened now, and also c5 square for the knight. So knight takes b5. Now, ah, now there is the novelty, bishop a6. It's a nice move, trying once again to open up this um, bishop takes b5, c takes b5, c4 move. The main move I have here is a4. After the logical move, knight c3. Black, uh, white is somehow in trouble after knight b6. Because after b3 we have a very, very strong move, knight b takes d5. So some fireworks here going on. If you can ever catch someone in preparation in this line, it would be very nice. Because uh, after knight takes d5, queen e8 check, bishop e2, knight takes d5, c takes d5, bishop d4. Um, black is actually winning already. It might be a bit hard to see, but if you have a look at uh, this position by yourself, or maybe look in the PGN files if they, they're um, introduced later, um, you can see that this is very, very bad for black, for white already. And then there's also c takes d5 here, of course. But after queen a5, using this pin, bishop takes a6, knight e4, very nice move. And black is also winning. So, that's it for f4. A good move because it stops knight e5, but as we see, if black is very, very up to the task and he finds this b5 move, he's even taking over. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, let me, let me show you the a4 move here. Bishop takes b5, a takes b5, queen e8 check. Knight e2 and now knight e4, and I think black has good compensation. b2 is hanging, and bishop on g5 is hanging. So, <laughs> after for example, queen c2, knight takes g5, f takes g5, queen e7, and then picking up the pawn on g5. I think black is better, so... F4, even a bit dubious maybe for white to play. Let's go to knight f3, the main line. Now we play rook e8 check. This check is quite disturbing now because he no longer has the option of knight e2, which would stop the check and also develop the piece normally. Um, therefore white's pretty much for, forced to play king f1. There is an option to play bishop e3, but this leads to a theoretical line from another Benoni position with a full tempo up, because there white plays bishop e3 in one go, whereas now he has played bishop g5 and bishop e3 back. Um, here black can play bishop h6, which is an important idea. 
And after castle, bishop takes e3, f takes e3. Queen e7. Um, black will continue with moves like rook f8 to neutralize this f file pressure. Then maybe knight e8 and knight e5 with an unclear position. Just to show you some moves. As I said, rook f8. As soon as there is some pressure coming. Ah, uh, and here I, I wrote knight d7. Also a natural square to go to e5 later. So this is fine for black. King f1 is the main move. White intends to bring the king into a safe position with g4 and king g2. And here, knight e5. Logical if we think about um, some of the rules I mentioned before about changing one piece. Well, this is the only way we can do it right now. So this loosens up our position a bit, or let me say free, uh, freeze the position. Knight takes e5, bishop ta rook takes e5. And here I looked at two moves. Queen d2 was played. Once again, um, we have this very nice idea of b5 here. And after knight takes b5, knight e4. Attacking the queen, so that is okay. Bishop takes e4, there is rook takes g5. And this is the game um, of Sezion against Ding Liren. Ding Liren, I think a name I've mentioned a couple of times before by now. It's a Chinese expert of the King's Indian. And uh, here he had good compensation for the pawn. Even though we don't have a b-pawn, we can press on white's b-pawn quite easily. We have this very nice bishop. And actually all our pieces are either going to be active very soon or they are already active. So this is fine. I instead I looked also at the idea of bishop f4, which is a novelty. Um, here there's rook e8. And if g4. Now white really tries to get everything together. If he managed to get a couple of tempi for getting his pieces out, he would be having a very good position. But there's a strong idea in knight d7 here. If he goes king g2 now, there's simply knight e5 with unclear consequences. For example, I think something like this could be very interesting. Um, instead, bishop takes d6 is critical. But here, the computer suggestion of bishop takes c3 is quite nice. When after b takes c3, and again b5, freeing up this position before white king is out of the danger. Looking already at this diagonal later. Um, black is uh, doing really, really fine. And for example, after rook b1, forcing b takes c4. But we're not playing b takes c4, we're playing knight b6. Bishop takes e5, b takes e4 now, bishop e2 and knight takes d5. The position is around equal and uh, perfectly playable for black. So that's about it for the h3 bishop g5 line. It's a tricky line, it uh, has a lot of similarities with the Averbach as you might have seen. Um, in fact it's a bit more opportunistic from white because he tries to blockade the c8 bishop on both the f5 and the g4 square. But um, the main idea to keep in mind is that if white takes too much time, we can always attack him with this b5 move to open up the position. And um, yeah, it, uh, it seems that this is completely um, fine for black. And also, quite, it seems to me like it's a lot of fun to play, uh, to play so dynamic. Um, so um, yeah, definitely not a line that we have to worry about too much. See you in the next video where we're going to discuss um, h3 combined with knight f3, which is a line where I have a bit more experience and some other interesting ideas to show you. Thank you for watching. This is Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for OnlineChessLessons.net. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. 
Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.